And meet me, uh, of course, in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, the 11th chapter. I'm going to read the first through the seventh verse into your hearing in the New Living Translation. Again, that's the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to be reading the first through the seventh verse into your hearing. And we're going on a journey today. So I want you to lean in and, and hear by the Spirit what it is that the Lord is saying. Okay? This is the word of God. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. Uh, they began to talk about construction projects, saying to each other, let's make bricks and hardened them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone, and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will be a monument to our greatness. Make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. We're going to hang our hat on verse 6 of Genesis, the 11th chapter, that says, this is God. Look, he said, the people are united. The people are united. Look, God said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Just for a couple of moments this morning, I want to talk from the thought, one band, one sound. One, one band, one, one sound. One band, one sound. Father, have your way as we open up your scripture. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. This morning, we're going to begin our United Nations series by examining the unity of language. That's where we're starting the unity of language, one band, one sound. Family, we love attending concerts, yes? We, we love attending concerts, whether it's a Kirk Franklin concert, a Maverick City concert, they're on tour now, or a Beyonce concert. Hey. Okay. Y'all don't just go see Kirk. <laughs> Who has seen the queen? I call her the queen. I'm not talking about Aretha. I'm talking about our queen. God bless you, Beyonce. You go to her concerts too. Concerts are one of our cultural pastimes. Uh, not just to have a reason to get dressed and to step out and to hang out with our friends, but because there's just something magical uh, to our ears and to our hearts and even our souls when we hear a drum, a, a bass, a guitar, a piano, a violin, and a saxophone, and a flute, all decide that instead of going at it alone, hmm, that they will allow their sound individually to come together with another sound to create a larger sound. We think, are y'all tracking with me this morning? We think it's the music that we're enjoying. Uh, but what's really occurring revelatory wise is we are captivated by all of those individual sounds finding a way to work together in concert. It's not called a concert 
because it's a musical presentation. It's called a concert because of the fact that all of the individual instruments are working together in concert. Mm. Uh, uh. Uh, it's called a concert because the word concert is defined as agreement. Yeah. <laughs> the word concert means harmony. Uh, the word concert means unity, united. It's called a concert because someone who has an awareness of what unites a collective uh, knows that out of all of those individual instruments uh, and all of those individual individual notes, uh, it would have greater impact uh, and greater reach and greater effectiveness if they work together in unity. What flute concert have you attended? Who has gone to a saxophone concert? No, but when it is that the flute decides, I can flute well. But if I connect my flute with a trombone, when I allow my flute to connect to a cello, it'll put a bass underneath my flute. It'll lift a bass, uh, it'll, it'll lift me up higher so that people can hear me more greater, family. Listen to this. Uh, uh, and just like music is powerful, uh, when individual notes decide to surrender their autonomy. Uh, likewise, language is powerful. Uh, language is the principal method of human communication and bonding. Uh, language is the glue that connects us as human beings. Uh, in the graphic that you put up, uh, all of those people made up all of those different nations. Uh, but Dominique, it was language uh, that made all of those people come to South Africa. It, it was somebody saying something that caused a family to move to Buenos Aires. Uh, it was a language that someone heard. It was a directive that they received that made them decide to settle over here in Australia. It was a language that got you into this church this morning. It was something that was spoken, uh, which actually provoked something in you that made you wake up early and get dressed and drive here. That wasn't your own intention. Language brought you in here today. Okay? Uh, language uh, is the principal method of human communication and bonding. So the question is, how does that connect to sound, Pastor K? I'm glad you asked because language, a uh, language is simply structured sound. Language is sound with structure. Linguistics is the scientific study of language uh, consisting of words spoken or heard. Uh, linguistics, it's a study of the rhythms of language and the sound waves of language because I want you to know that the directive alone doesn't move you. If that was the case, Kalana, you would be somewhere else this morning. It was what you heard underneath the sound waves of what was spoken to you. It was a sound that traveled inside the word that got you to do the things that you do. And God wants to ask uh, you a question this morning. When you speak, what sound is heard? One band, one sound. But greater than that, do you want what you're trying to say to be amplified? Or are you okay with your current volume? Okay, 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 Tarnisha. Uh, because a United Nation with United Language is an amplified nation. The truth is a United Nation with United Language is an amplified sound that produces blessings. And here it is, the 11th chapter of the book of Genesis, 
the book of beginnings, that we find a biblical account of the power of unified language. Uh, it's an account of the Tower of Babel, uh, which biblical historians believe was probably shaped like a ziggurat, uh, which was a popular structure in Babylonia at that time. Uh, uh, most often built like temples that you see almost in Egypt. A uh, uh, ziggurat uh, looked like pyramids, uh, but they had steps leading up the sides of the pyramid. Uh, and in that day, ziggurat stood as high as 300 feet. Uh, and you have to remember, this is at a time, ancient times, where there was no machinery. These are bricks and stones that are being placed by individual people. Uh, and there uh, often was they were wide, very wide, and thus what they built uh, would be a focal point in the entire city because they built it so high that no matter where you were, you could see it. Yeah. Are y'all trying? Yeah. Let me say it. They built it so high, Chad that there was nothing that could possibly obstruct their ability to see what was built. The text says, you read it, at one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. They began to talk about construction projects, saying to each other, come, let's build a great city for ourselves. These conversations are happening now with a tower that reaches into the sky. Uh, and then the text goes on to say, the Lord came down uh, to look at the city. Uh, and God came down uh, to look at what the people were building. And he said, look, uh, uh, the people are united. Because the first point of focus in this text is that the truth is a uh, unity gets God attention huh. it don't matter what kind of unity it is I'll get there in a minute uh, God unity gets God's attention uh, the people collectively decided to unify uh, and how do we know that they were unified uh, because the text goes on to say they all spoke the same language see it wasn't the bricks that unified them. The revelation is that it was the fact that they were all speaking the same direction that unified them. The language is what gave the bricks its instruction, okay? But a brick can't move itself. Only unity makes things move. Even if it's a negative united front, Dominique, anything that decides to come together collectively, it can begin to move and shift whatever it is that they decide to shift. Even a gang, when they decide to come together in unity, will get God's attention and they can begin to move things in a neighborhood. It may not be a positive unity, but it's unity nonetheless. Unity has the power to move things and to shift things. But if one individual received varying instruction for one brick, you'd have scattered bricks. But if multiple people in that land decided to speak the same brick language and all those people decided that regardless of what they intended to do with their brick at first and they decide to come into contact and tell their brick what somebody else said to their brick then all of a sudden those bricks are going to come together in unity they were all speaking in Babylonia in concert they they were all speaking in Babylonia as a collective. I don't know, Tiana, how they got all them people to speak the same. They were all speaking as a unified body. And when individuals start speaking the same language, the range of their individual voice is multiplied. The range of their individual skill multiplied. The range of their vision is instantly multiplied because family, the truth is God 
is trying to unify so that he can multiply. This is not about togetherness. It's about increase. This is not about kumbaya. This is about advancement. This isn't about having company. This is about taking over territory. God wants unity so that he can make you great. It's okay. Y'all gonna make me work. Uh, Powerful kingdom nations exist. Uh, Powerful kingdom nations exist when people are willing to allow their individual sound and their individual voice, uh, their individual opinion, their individual perspective, the way you do it, the way your mom and them do it, (laughs) the way your community does it. This is how we do it as black people. This is how we do it as white people. This is how we do it as Asian people. But what if everybody decided to do it like God? What would happen, Chad, is that no one would be obstructed from seeing the big picture. Have you ever seen one train car moving down a track? Have you ever stop at a train, train, track, what, what is that called? The railroad. And it's like da, 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 and it's buzzing. And you hit, you just see one, one car. Just, have you, very rare, you have, oh, there's, there's a reason for that. Why would we send one train car? But what happens It's that you take multiple train cars and you connect them onto each other. Dominique, the more cars, more cargo. You won't be able to transport everything God showed you in that vision unless you do one of two things. Connect to another car or allow another car to connect to you. I don't really like to do, I, you know, I have my way. We do certain things on this car, but you don't realize some cars are the sleeping cars. Other cars have the seats in them. Uh Then there's other cars where the dining hall, have you ever been on a long train? Every car might have a different thing going on inside the car. But if I decide uh, that I just don't want to be a restaurant car, uh, because if you go down the track by yourself, who's coming to eat your food? There's no seats connected to your restaurant car. No one's buying my program. You ain't, you ain't connected. God sent you somebody who offered to be a content creator for your little vision. But because you were scared of them taking over your vision, you didn't accept their help. But what you didn't know they have a greater audience than you. It's mathematics. You don't want their help because you're fearful. Actually, you're prideful. And you want all the credit for yourself, which means that your vision is really not from God. It came out of your own self-advancement desires. But when God gives you a vision, you'll connect with anybody that he tells you in order to get the train down the track. What if they built their following for you? What if I told you that somebody else's 100,000 followers was built for you? Yeah. This whole time they've been grinding. 
this whole time they've been working just so that God could wait until they got to a point where you can connect to their train and their 100,000 followers become yours. But not you. You wonder. Wonder. You are wonder in your own mind. You don't have any fruit to support your wonderness, but you want to go at it alone. You don't want to unify because you think you flute so well. But I declare I'm never going to a flute concert. And I, but listen to what the Lord is saying. I'm trying to magnify me through you and I'm coming today someone is going to come back around this is prophetic I hear the Lord saying because you've already met them he brought them before he says to you prophetically I'm going to send them around one more time this applies to various areas of you all's life I could start naming you all one by one in the Holy Ghost when I bring them back around when they offered to babysit your child and you didn't want to allow them to babysit your child. Yes, when God was trying to give you the free time that you needed to be able to work on. God says, I'm going to bring it around one more time. And when I bring it around, connect to their car. So that you can transport more cargo. And they don't have to do what you do. They don't have to have, they don't, they could sell a whole nother product. Well, you know, this is not what we sell. Child, what is wrong? What, do you, does Target sell one thing? Have mercy on us, God. They don't do what I do, yeah. But their customers don't know who you are. But if you connect to their train, they'll keep coming to buy their perfume and then find out about your t-shirt. And they'll cop the perfume and your t-shirt. And, well, I tried that, Pastor. I see some of y'all. They didn't start following me on my page. They don't need, the, you want their credit card information. Let me come back down. Let me cut me back down. I'm sorry. Because I know people on Instagram that have 1,000 followers that are bringing in over $100,000. I don't need you to follow me. I need you to purchase my prop. I need your credit card and the three numbers on the back. What are the security? That, that's up. Because you, you need the three numbers. You need the three numbers on the back. Okay. Where was I? Uh, okay. Okay. Again, the more train cars you have, the more cargo you can carry. I'm almost done. Well, Pastor K at True City, what are we carrying? <laughs> We're carrying our collective unified mission. What, what is wrong? We're transforming lives through the truth of God's word. Remember the text said they all speak the same language. So then what is true city's native language? No. Bible. We're in our car. <laughs> we transform lives to the truth of God's word, which means the, what we're serving up is the that's the only thing we have to offer you and some cupcakes other than that that's all but it is it all we have or is it all we need okay in order for us though to speak our native language collectively we'd all have to know it oh. so i'm speaking bible you speaking And that sounded nice. It was true. It was lovely. 
but it's not transformative. It was true. It was kind, but it wasn't transformative. It was true and it was helpful, but it didn't shift my entire trajectory. Uh, Ezekiel said, eat this scroll. Part of them being united was that they all spoke the same language. And because of that, God went further in the text. And he says, after this, all same language, all these cars connected to one another, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. When a community of faith decides to speak the same language, it then transfers into kingdom power and authority. The same language is how quick the devil will be casted out of somebody. It doesn't happen at the altar. It happens when you agree in the church board meeting you have to understand that it's really not spooky it's the power of unity it's the power of the same language if you're looking to do the impossible if you're looking to manifest the impossible you'll find the power to do it in the seat of unity now I'm talking to your marriages I'm talking to what's going on at work on your team that you serve on. I'm talking about in your family dynamic. If it is that you're looking for God to heal your grandmama, try having the cousins come together in unity. I don't understand that. Do you know that your disunity is making your grandmama sick? Do you know that she worries about the state of where you all are at? Yeah. Oh, God. Y'all put her in the hospital. The power of unity. The power of disunity. Both of them have a power. But if you're looking for God to do the supernatural... What you need to do is decide, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to come to you, and instead of telling the other cousin how offended you are, I'm going to come to that cousin and say, what you said to me last time I saw you, it hurt my feelings. This is why it hurt my feelings. It reminded me of this. I was in a low place, my self-esteem, and you, what you said, it triggered something in me. And I've been upset with you. I haven't wanted to talk to you, but I've decided because God forgave me that I'm going to forgive you. And can we start over again? And the next time that we see each other, can you do me a favor and not say these things? They're trigger words for me. But instead, you haven't talked to your relative in over 10 years. And they had no idea where you were at when they said it. We have a responsibility to communicate ourselves into unity. Listen, family, the Bible says, Mark 3, the 24th verse, if a kingdom is divided against itself... That kingdom cannot stand. Wherever there is stagnation, there's a lack of unity. Wherever you find any type of frustration, there's a lack of unity. Wherever there is degradation, I promise you there's a seed of a lack of unity. Genesis 11 and 6 in the message translation said it this way. God took one look and said, one people one language. And what God desires is one collective body of believers all choosing to submit to one language. Now that's of even greater consequence than merely collective words because when we use language, remember we are not just sending collective words, but we are sending a collective sound. But a sound, a sound has the capacity to move things into place. I 
I said that. Now notice one band, one sound, that I said a sound uh, has the capacity to move things into place. I didn't say a literal word uh, has the capacity. Now the word of God uh, has the capacity to move things, but I believe there's a sound uh, that a blood-bought, twice-born, Holy Ghost-filled, fire-baptized believer has the capacity to move things when we hear the sound. But I declare that when a Holy Ghost blood bought, twice born, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized group of believers uh, decide to unify in language uh, and release a unified sound uh, that the earth has to stand at attention uh, waiting with bated breath on heaven's instruction. Don't worry because I got Bible proof. Uh, Jericho. Now, Jericho, I just want to prove it in the text. Jericho was shut up inside and outside. You couldn't get in, Corey. It was shut up eh, because of the people of Israel. Uh, shut up. No access. Can't get in. Nah. Uh, and the Lord said to Joshua, I'm in the text, uh, see, I've given Jericho into your hand. The thing that shut up, the thing that you don't have access to, the thing that you can't get in, I've given you that. What do you do when God gives you something, but you can't get in it? Now Jericho was shut up inside and out because the people of Israel, none went out. And none could come in. And here goes the Lord to Joshua. I've given you Jericho. I've put it in your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. So how are we going to access what is shut up that can't nobody get in and can't nobody get out? Here's the instruction. You shall march around the city. All the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do this for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. We got people marching. We, we got instruments of playing. On the seventh day, though, that marching is not going to get you that access. Neither are those instruments playing going to get you that access. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up everyone straight before him not because they marched around the wall seven times not because the trumpet let out a sound but because they obey God and march they obey God and release the trumpet but the people let out a collective sound it was one band and it was one one sound. If it had been absent of the shout of the believers, they still wouldn't have gotten behind the wall. God is waiting for you to make a sound. The breakthrough that you're waiting on is waiting for you to make a sound. Uh, the thing that you can't have access to is waiting for you to make a sound. Uh, the interview that you seem to not be able to get, God is waiting for you to make a collective sound. What is that sound? Jesus is a sound. available to you oh God it's available but it comes because I obey God and it's not easy 
It's not easy. <laughs> But I try to obey him. And the more I obey him, and the more I talk his talk, the more I say his language, he transfers his power into me. And so it's like, what do you mean a shout? But I'm trying to tell you, if you decide for the next seven days to stop sinning, I'll deal with the other days later. If you just try for the next seven days, and I'm not talking about the big sins. You need to stop those now. I'm talking about the small things that are large. Like don't talk about anybody. Nobody cares about your opinion anyway. Keep your opinion to yourself. Give your opinion to God. Be kind to people. Don't utter anything that's not true. Don't bear false witness against another. Be kind and be gracious. Be humble. If over the next seven days you read the Bible every day instead of reading it on our screens in here, I want to let you know that by Saturday night, if if you decide to release a sound, I promise you the one thing that you have not been able to break open will be broken open unto you on Saturday evening. Anybody want to give it a try? Let me know how it goes. Now I'm almost done. I want to highlight for you in our focal text what the course of action was when there was a desire to stop the unified work. I'm back in our text. I want us to look, because we have to be theologically accurate, at our focal text regarding the course of action uh, when there was a desire to stop, to put a stop to the unified work. The Bible says, God says, come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. If we do that, they won't be able to what does it say? See, when we speak different languages, it's impossible for work to continue. Not because I don't believe in the work, nor because I don't see the importance of the work, but because I can't understand what you're saying. I see you talking and I hear you talking, but it's a language that I do not know, so I cannot make a collective move in the right direction. And a huge tactic in warfare uh, is to confuse the language of those that are supposed to be fighting together. Uh, and instead of them ha uh, having uh, a unified stance against the enemy, uh, they become divided amongst themselves. Uh, the enemy doesn't have to divide the situation if he can divide you. Okay, you can't build while you're feuding. Okay, did Prophet Jay-Z talk about family feuds? Okay, I'm talking to someone's personal life now. Okay, let me say it again. You can't build if you're feuding. The only reason why you're feuding is because the enemy wants to distract you from building. Uh, but the truth is, family, oh gosh, uh, it's easier for Satan to attack many individual ones uh, uh, as opposed to him having to attack an army of one. Uh, and it's the underworld's desire uh, to keep the church divided. Divided, uh, to keep the church thinking different uh, and speaking different uh, and having different doctrines uh, and different understandings. Uh, and the underworld has been accomplishing that uh, by ensuring that the church is not speaking the same language. Uh, but 2 Corinthians 11, 3 through 4 says, but I am afraid uh, uh, that even as the serpent uh, beguiled Eve by his cunning, uh, your minds may be corrupted and led away from the simplicity of your sincere and pure devotion to Christ for you seem willing to allow it if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received or a different gospel from the gospel that you accepted 
when you got saved. Uh, you tolerate all this beautifully welcoming the... Now, someone could and should pose the question, well, wait a minute, Pastor. In our text, a dark demonic spirit itself is not what confused their language. It was God who confused their language. So I don't understand why God is doing something that I would deem as being ungodly. But let's see why. The text clearly says, God said, come, let's go down. God, not the enemy and confuse the people with different languages, then they won't be able to understand each other and the building will stop. So again, pastor, why would God want to bring confusion to their language? Family, God chose to confuse their language, not because what they were building was becoming great, but because of the intent, the motivation, and the spirit behind what they were collectively building. Remember, their hearts were exposed in the text. They said in verse 4, let's build a great city for who? With a tower that reaches into the sky. This will be a monument to and make us what? They were building empires unto themselves. So God himself brought about confusion because in this hour, God says, I'm returning back to the times uh, where the only thing that I will allow to be erected high uh, is that which will allow my children to see me. Uh, I don't want another man-made building uh, to obstruct my children from seeing me. Uh, I don't want another man-made movement uh, to obstruct my children from seeing me. I want God ordained unity so that people are able to see that I am the master builder. So Psalm 133, we're done. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers uh, to dwell together in. It is like the precious oil. Unity is like anointed oil. This whole sermon is about spiritual power. And somebody here might have heard the word unity. I'm sorry. We're talking about power. That unity is the same as holy anointed oil. That your ability to unify is the same as the precious oil of consecration poured on the head. Jesus is our head coming down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, that's a priest, coming down upon the edge of the priest's robe. Unity consecrates an entire body. So we're going to have altar night this month but I promise you, the power that we need in the spirit realm is not going to come because we collectively come to altar night this month. It's going to come because all the greeters move at one band, one sound. When the production team is unified, somebody will come to this altar and get a breakthrough. When the ministerial team is on one accord, that devil will come out of that person as soon as they walk in the building and no one has touched them. You waited for something spooky? Here you go. Connect with the person. You want to see in the invisible realm? Put down your sound and allow God to put something underneath it. Allow him to put something on top of your stuff. Allow him to put something on the left of your stuff.
Allow him to put something on the right of your stuff. If it is that you want to have supernatural power that is the same as the same oil that Gertrude Stacks puts together in her office, all you have to do is just submit your individual and allow yourself to become a collective. One band, one sound. Because the Bible says, coming down upon the edge of his priestly robes, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon coming down on the hills of Zion. That's the church. For at the place of unity, that's where I will bless you. If you're lacking blessings in your life, you're lacking unity. The moment you unify according to the Lord's will, God will instantly pronounce a blessing before you even do anything with what you're latched on to. The latching itself, the connecting itself, there God commands a blessing not desires a blessing, but as soon as you connect instantly, there commands a blessing. And what is the blessing? Life forevermore. I want you, I want you to have unity so I can get my blessings to you. I want you to have unity so that I can get my blessings through you. I know you think this is God, that you can go at it alone. And God says, I know you've had success thus far going at it alone. But what if I told you you haven't seen anything yet? And what if I told you that one of those cargo trains is called peace? What if I told you that one of those cargo trains is called joy? What if I told you that one of those cargo trains is called laughter? God wants to put a comedian on your team because laughter, it heals heavy hearts. God wants to give you a whole and complete life and you think they're too silly and God says you're too serious. So I, I know you think you got it, but in God's kingdom, we do it together. And it starts with us all being willing to speak the same language, Bible, and to release the same sound, Jesus, a sound that casts the devil out and brings the broken in, into the ultimate unity of fellowship with him. So there's this African proverb, I'm done. It says, if you wanna go fast, Go alone, but if you want to go far, go. The question is, do you want, do you want it to go fast? Or do you want to go far? As for Kalita, I want, I want to go far. The speed is not my concern as long as everyone is able to see the big picture. So everyone's standing. Your search can be over today. Your search can be over today. And what many people are looking for that they don't have, the word for is unity. When people say I'm looking for family, that's true, but they're really looking for unity. When people say, I'm looking for my tribe, what they're really looking for is unity. Because there are many spaces and places and people that can be unified. And uh, there are some aggregations that are more unified than churches. As a social scientist, in 45 years of living, the least unified aggregation I've seen 
from a sociological standpoint, our churches. That should not be. But I think the way we solve that is for the church to remember that they're the kingdom, right? And that if we allow ourselves to see ourselves as a nation, a kingdom nation, then unity is the order of the day. You don't have to look outside of God for unity. And True City is a part of God's united kingdom. We don't do division at all at Truth City. If anybody has experienced it, let me know. I don't think that's anybody's testimony to date to the glory of God. We don't do division at True City, but what we do do is multiplication, right? And if you speak fluent Bible, and you've been searching for a community of faith that speaks fluent Bible, then I invite you this morning to connect your train car to all the other train cars here at True City so that we can put all of our puzzle pieces together, yes, so that people will be able to see Christ and so that nothing will be impossible to us. So those that have been searching for a people that aren't split in their beliefs and aren't split in their confessions, but a collective body of believers all surrendering to the united language of the kingdom, I pray God for the power that you are infusing into this faith community as you begin to teach us in the levels of collective unity. I pray God that you would make it so, just lift your hands to the Father, that God, we be an aggregation of people of which nothing will be impossible for us. I pray, God, that you would bind us together with such a spirit of unity that we will almost forget our own skill. We'll have to remind one another. We will be so focused, God, on trying to figure out a way that we can connect what we do and, and what our gift and our, our talent and our ability, oh God, that we will be able to find somebody that we can connect to, that we will want to find somebody, God, at your leading, Father, that can literally add what they have into what it is that we have and that there was something that I could do by myself, but now because I've connected, I pray, God, that you would multiply your people at their obedience to this word I'm asking you God that as soon as they humble themselves and you bring that situation back around that opportunity back around that help back around that invitation back around that offering back around that as soon as they say yes I pray that you would command a manifested blessing right at that moment I'm asking you oh God that a spirit of increase will hit the lives of your people as a result of their obedience to this word. God, we're asking that we learn how to take our flutes and our saxophones and our pianos and our violins and our cellos and our drums and that they would be able to collectively put together such a sound, oh God, that your people will be able to sense you and hear you and smell you and feel you. Father, we're asking that we collectively be walking oil Whew. Jesus and father that whenever we move God that people will be able to sit underneath the poor that is you God in its various demonstrations unify us oh God and multiply our voices in Jesus name somebody say amen